All right. Hello, beautiful people. I am Son Holo, and this video is all about how I made my song, All the Highs. All the Highs is about all the lows and all the highs in life. It's about memories. It's about the word Sonder. Go look it up. It's a beautiful word. Not my name Sonder, but Sonder with an O. <laughs> um, and yeah, I just kind of wanted to show you how I made this song and show you some of the sounds that I that I love. And um, let's get started. Let's listen to the first part of the song. Actually, let's listen to the drop first because that's where I want to start. So that's the drop. I wanted to start with that drop because that's kind of the first thing I made for this song. Um, it really all started with this with this hi hat pattern that I found somewhere. Let me play it for you. Yeah, I heard this and um, it just it just resonated with me. It's something special. It's a uh, this rhythm makes me wanna wanna move and and bob my head uh, so I started adding more symbols to it like and I was like yes this feels emotional already <laughs> without any chords or other, other sounds it just sounds like it could be something very very emotional And I like every sound to be very emotional, because um, I'm a song holo, and that's what I do, um, <laughs> I guess. So yeah, after having this this little hi hat pattern going, the first thing I th I thought of was, oh, this could be a house song, like ish 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 ish. ish. But um, I also really love halftime stuff, like trap shit, and and I decided to put the snare somewhere else so it's like and then at the kick yeah there's two kick layers there's a there's a roomy kick and a, and a direct kick going on and this just felt like the backbone of the song to me normally trap is very very straight it's very ticka 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 and and this is the first kind of swingy beat that i've i've made um with with a with a trap feel to it and it opened up a whole new whole new world for me in terms of um in terms of creativity so I was looking for the right chords, and I think the first chords I played were were with a Mellotron sound, because Mellotron feels dreamy to me, feels feels airy and floaty, and and um, yeah, like um, wavy. I felt like this track was going to be wavy, so this is th these are the first chords I played. And I was like, yes, this is, this is wavy. <laughs> so I, what, what I always do is, is I, I think of the chords and then I add different sounds to those chords to make it sound uh, 
a little bit, you know, bigger. I like stacking sounds uh, and making them like one one big sound together. So I added some saw synths. They pan left and right. And those synths are from Massive, just a standard Massive saw synth. Um, and I think I also added some, some choir vocals to it. Same kind of chords. These are from Contact, Contact the standard library. And, and I don't know, I, I, just, I mean, I can't, I don't know if I can speak for myself because I made it, but I, it feels really pretty to me and it feels very uh, uh, dreamy. Um, but it's, it's basically the same four chords repeating um, every, every couple of bars. So I wanted to switch that up with the, with, with the bass uh, notes. So the bass notes are, they create some, some, some uh, variety in the chords. And I first was like, am I going to use 808s? But um, I, th I think 808s were too heavy for this song. I, I, I was looking for something a little bit more soft. And um, this is the, the notes I, I picked. And these are just really standard, um, massive sine waves. Um, let me play them real quick. I think it's three octaves. It's uh, it's it's one octave here, another octave, and a super low octave. And um, it did the job. It does the job. Um, And there's some some pitch bends in there, like for example this one. I don't know why I did that, but this sounds good. I I literally do not know why this pitch bend is here. It just felt good. It's like I don't know. I I, I, I just think it's pretty. It, it adds to the to the to the flow of the waviness maybe because it's waviness and it goes up a little bit and down i don't know i think that's the beauty of making music sometimes you 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 do things because it just uh it, it feels a certain way and you can't really describe it or or rationalize it it just uh it just happens and you can see this little bass part here actually um i added that in because it's basically just an octave to this because this one goes so low. <laughs> all the all the lows, all the highs. It goes so low. I couldn't hear it on my laptop speaker, so I added an octave um, just with the with the lows cut off, so you could still hear it on my laptop speakers. So I'm uh I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the the melody now. I because the chords were were not enough, right? I was looking for a simple melody to, melody to go go over it on top, and it's it. Yeah, do you know that that uh, Yamaha keyboard I have? that you know I, I use my voice and, and I sing in it and then it samples on the keys. This is basically one of the 
one of those samples, but then I put it in a sampler and just, you know, played it with, uh, with the port, port amendo function on. So it glides up. Wow, now, now that I'm explaining this, I realize how much the waviness is actually, you know, in all of the sounds, it's like, the, you know, the bends up and down. Uh, it's really a wave. It's really life, <laughs> basically. Um, so once again, it's a very simple melody. Da, 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 da. And um, I want to counter that with, with, a, with another sound, so... My um, my first instinct were were adding these weird triplets, um, like right here. Yeah, and it makes no sense why why that works because it's a shuffle kind of swing beat, and then there's a trap drum, and then there's a triplet. Na, 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 na. I don't know, but it felt felt really, really special. Um, yeah, that sound is basically just. Um, let me play it for you real quick. Uh, here we go. Oh. Should be hearing something right now. Oh, there we go. Just a simple, all the stuff I do is very simple, very basic saw synths, like. But then I add like a, a, a envelope on the filter. Sounds like a trumpet almost. And that sounds like this. Wow, I went one too high. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> I went anyway that's that's the sound my my mind just modulated for a second <laughs> oh and there's, and there's a sound in the background that you're probably not not aware of actually uh it's an sk1 cos a casio sk1 that has the most beautiful portamendo uh, in the world and if you listen to the sound it just sounds there's so much emotion in this sound already and you cannot describe why it just does sound so special I don't know it sounds so special and I think that's kind of what's go everything that's going on in a drop um Let's listen to the full thing one more time. Oh, just one more thing, actually. Guitars. Yeah, this is basically just a, a guitar direct in with a lot of delay and, and, and reverb. And then there's some uh, grain delay. I rarely use a grain delay, but I, I was looking for an octave, a sparkly octave on top of it. You can barely hear it in the mix, but it does, it does add to the, to the overall vibe. So that's that's the drop. Um, and now let me take you to actually the start of the song, um, which has a, a couple of interesting sounds going on. Typical son holo sine wave chords. Um, I, f I froze the silent one because uh, I don't have the plugin right now because I changed my laptop. And uh, silent is acting a little bit weird with it, but. Um, I can I can recreate it in uh, in massive actually. Let me do that real quick. 
<laughs> always go back to Massive. I, I heard they didn't update on Massive. I haven't even installed it yet. But maybe I should look into the new Massive. Um, let's listen. That's basically it. Oh, good to mention there's a shaper box on here, which is just a simple LFO tool. Um, I, I've tried other LFO tools, but there's this thing about the shaper box that um, feels very organic. I don't know what it is, the way the the volume curve starts or stops. It it, it uh, I've used the shaper box for a long... First, it was called the volume shaper. Now they changed it to the shaper box, but it's, it has a certain sound to it that I really like. Um, let's compare the... The silent one. Oh, I hear I hear an octave on there too. So it's um. that's it. Yeah. So that's the the intro synth. And, um, you know, the first time I played these chords, I was already like, I want the vocal to start. I want the vocal to start a little bit later, not on the first uh, second of the song. I want the, I want it to come later. So. And then it was only after I wrote, wrote, um, some of these lyrics that, um, that I decided to, that I said, that I decided to add the melody. So first it was just this. And I was like, something's missing, so I added this melody, which is a vocal sample in Simpler, really simple, just. Oh yeah, I did this cool bend here. Pretty. I think it's pretty. And there's another weird bend at the end. You hear how how bad it sounds when you solo it. Cause I think it's bending the reverb too, so it's like But you don't hear that in the track, fortunately. Yeah, it's pretty. Um, other than that, just some claps. Stereo spread the claps. <laughs> Murder clap. <laughs> and then we go to the build up, which is kind of like a a little throwback to uh, to some of my older songs called light and lift me from the ground I feel like I was looking for because this is kind of a different beat for me um, this kind of swingy um, I wanted to to have an element in here that people would recognize from from my older songs so that was definitely the stutter synth that um the stutter synth that you can also hear in lift me from the ground and and in light um it sounds like this which is just auto pen and then adding the ott afterwards so like the auto pen makes it kind of choppy, but then adding the OTT afterwards makes it even, like it's it's it snaps to every transient. So it sounds very, very um, aggressive and and um, you know really. How do I describe that sound? Stuttery, but really extremely percu percussive too. And what you hear is a massive. And um, that Yamaha synth that I was talking about. Um, 
Actually, a funny story, a funny story about that Yamaha synth. Right? This is the Yamaha VSS30. And I remember the first time I, I did uh, a video breaking down one of my songs. I think it was the light video, how I made light. I talked about that VSS. And after that video, there was a spike in, um, in, in sales on, on the VSS30 on uh, on reverb and it actually went up in price i think from that point i'm not sure but i think someone showed me this graph and it was like after that video like you know there was this huge spike uh, i thought it was really funny everyone's like in on the secret now um but hey i hope you enjoy this this cool keyboard because it's awesome vss30 the prettiest synth there is um, and then I just added simple snares. That's it. That's all you need. Let me take you to the, the second verse because there's a couple of sounds there that uh, that are introduced later on that I wanna wanna show you soloed. Um, I think there's a Rhodes in here, Fender Rhodes. Very pretty. Very warm sound. You hear the, I think it's just a contact plugin, but the key to making plugin sounds real is putting the, the velocity all the way down and then boosting them later. So it sounds very, I don't know why, it just sounds more real when you, when you play it very soft and you hear all the side effects and you blow those up in volume and compress them. So pretty. Yeah, and then there's this glass sample here. <laughs> I don't know why. It just felt really good. Yeah, I don't know why. It, it, it's just, it felt like it needed something there. Um, I think that's about it for the, for the second verse. It goes into a build-up. Oh, yeah, I want to show you that. Let's talk about the vocals real quick, okay? Because um, I think the vocals are actually a, a huge part of the track. Um as you can see, the, the project is all over the place. There's vocals in the middle, there's vocals at the bottom, um, but that's just that's just how it goes. Um, I'm gonna show you my my main vocals, my main vocal take, and the lyrics are: "I thought about you last night. You're on repeat in my mind. Our memories on rewind. All the lows, all the highs." So this is kind of my own little personal Sonder, with an O, Sonder moment, um, where I'm just thinking about, uh, you know, a person. Um, but other than, you know, to me, this song is really not just about my experience. It's more about a, a, a broader sense of lows and highs in life and everyone going through the same you know ups and downs well their their own unique ups and downs but i just got really um obsessed with with the idea or the thought or the question actually the question the fact that everyone has their own path and own story and own reality does that separate us or does that connects us in a way think about it it's interesting it's is that a 
something that separates us or connects us. Um, and that was the main thought I had writing this. All the lows, all the highs. Anyway, let's listen. Sorry. I don't want to get too philosophical, but I think it's, it's interesting to know. Um, yeah. But hey, like I said many times before, this song can mean whatever you want it to mean to you. That's the most important thing. You have your own, have your own uh, perspective with this song. Sang it really, really quietly. Or softly. How do you say that in English? Quietly or softly? <laughs> you know what I mean. Oh, I think this is actually the doubled. Um, the, the one in the middle is this one. I think it was a Neumann mic. Which is which is rare for me because normally I use like an SM58. But my friend, the Nicholas, had a had my mic that I never use at his place for some random reason. Um, which uh, brings me to the next part. Um, I recorded the vocals at, at the Nicholas, his studio, home studio, and I was like, the vocals are missing something, and he has this beautiful, beautiful uh, lower voice with, with still a lot of air and, and, and high end to it. So I asked him to sing an octave, octave below, and it, and it just blew me away. It sounds so pretty. It's like the glue that I, that's, it's beautiful. So let me talk to you quickly about the processing because, you know, this is all kind of stemmed out because I had to stem it out. Otherwise, my com computer would just not play. I mean, there's like 180 tracks in here. Um, I made this song on my old laptop. Now I got the M1. It actually is great. It would it would play with all the processing on, but um, I made this song almost a year ago now. So, wow, I made it almost a year ago, and I, I'm so excited that it's out. Like it's really, I've I've been waiting for this to come out for so long because it feels like a very special song to me. The processing is just um, some compression and wave tune, wave tune on on everything. Well, not on the group, of course, but on every, on every uh, single track. Um, and then there's the reverb group. All Valhalla reverbs. I wanted something super over-the-top reverby. I think I, I, in my mind, I kind of heard this song. Uh, I can't remember the title. Uh, oh, it's I think it's uh, Foster and the People, the, the pumped up kicks. Um, they have this really, really kind of dreamy vocal to like a kind of indie reverb. Oh yeah. Did you hear the chirp? Here. Here we go. <laughs> Almost forgot it was there. That's a little signature chirp right there. <laughs> What I really wanted to show you is is the 
it's the backing vocals he did for this. We were just, you know, I just played the track for him and he was like, let me do some some harmonies in, in the second verse. And wow, it blew me away. This is the, I think we were just running the, the, the track and he, was, he had this little mic. He was just humming along and, and singing along. And uh, this is one of, the, one of his takes. Oh, you hear me, you hear me, you hear me say, yeah, at the end. <laughs> I didn't know it was in there, actually, it's funny. So yeah, he's just like messing around, I cut, I pitched some things up myself. Um, I remember when he, when he sang that, no. Nah, I thought that high note was so pretty, I, I reverbed it. Here again. That sometimes you just... Happy accidents happen, and when he sang that note, I was just like... That note... On that chord, it's just... Goosebumps, goosebump shit, so beautiful. Let me let me solo the vocals really quick. Um, so you hear the the beauty of, of this harmony. I think I saw you last night. Wow. All the lows, all the highs. Yeah, and if you you can hear how messy it is, it's just, it's got clicks in there, it's got pops. But it sounds. little drum fill here I wonder what that was originally just like a uh, now it's processing on that one is pretty extreme OTT after distortion I think it's actually the hi-hat that really makes it I mean, that, that drum fill is cool, but listen to this hi-hat pattern with the drum fill. Mm. Yeah, great. It feels kind of weird talking about my own track saying, oh, this is so great, this is so great, but it's I'm not talking about the track, I'm just talking about every, all the sounds. Um, <laughs> But it's a pretty great track. Come on, <laughs> at least I, I really resonate with it, and I, that that's my goal. I just want to connect to every single sound that I that I put into this world. The outro. I made so many different outros, and and I think this is this was this was the winner. Um. I added the these vocals, these pitched up vocals last minute actually. And this is where the build up starts. I just thought it was cool, the highs, it goes higher. Um, and then it's just a bunch of th synths I 
And you guessed it, most of these synths are uh, just massive. I froze them, sorry. Another, another layer is this. Just one note. Sometimes you just need one note. Classic M1 pat. Mellotron. Choir. Oh yeah, that, that that little trumpet pad comes back there. Um. the end I remember I wanted I wanted it to end on a on a major chord so I I um, added this massive synth with a lot of reverb that I faded in at the end oh, I don't think that's it wait let me where's the where's the major chord mm. I swear it must be here somewhere. Is that this? Here we go. Very minimal, but but if I'll sh I'll show it, I'll show it without. Didn't doesn't feel good. Doesn't feel good. But now. How it feels good. <laughs> it's really that. That's why my tracks have like sometimes two hundred plus channels because it has to feel feel right. Um, every little sound. I think the last things I want to talk about is, the, is these vocals here at the end. You were on repeat in my mind. Oh, and the guitars. So I love playing guitars straight into the interface. This is what it sounds like without any effects. Oh. That's it. <laughs> and then with. And then with a double. Octave up. Yeah, very, very, very post rock shoegazy. And there's a little piano over it, too. That's it. I think that that kind of sums up the song. All the highs. Um, the mastering on this is pretty simple. Um, like I said, I changed I changed laptop, so I, I did this in, on Ozone Eight, and now um, for the, for the purpose of this video, I had to install Ozone Nine and kind of you know redo the mastering. So it's not the exact same mastering chain, but I'll just take you through it really quick. Um, if you can, yeah, I, I work in, in a lot of groups and it doesn't make any sense, but it does.
basically I don't use my master channel for, for any mastering. I just make one big group of the entire thing. Because now when I want to compare my master to like another master I drag in, I can just have that one master go through the the normal output and the, and my master through a group. So I can switch back and forth really easily without having to unclick and click all these plugins. Um, yeah, the mastering. Um, the biggest part of my sound comes from side chaining the kick and the snare to the rest. So this is the mix group where all the sounds um, are in. <laughs> Sometimes I just can't form good sentences. Um, but this is the mix group where all the sounds remain. Um, and as you can see, there's heavy side chaining going on here, both on the kick and on the snare. But then there's also sounds that I don't want to sidechain. So all the all the stuff I want to be sidechain, I put in the mix group, and all the stuff I don't want to sidechain, I put on top. So here's the kicks and the snares and the outro snares here. Oh, the, the outro snares actually um, deserve some some explanation. So this is a clap, the, the the classic light snare. Oh, sorry, I think that the yeah, this is the light snare. <laughs> there we go. And then it's a sweep. Wow, these snares are layered. And there's white noise at the end too. That really helps. Let me solo the, the white noise real quick. That's it. All right. The rest is just, you know, standard limiting. Um, this is not maximized yet for like a, for like maximum loudness, but what I basically do is I, is I limit pretty hard. Till I till I feel like it's it's squashing too much, and then what I do a lot after that is just um, I add a little L2 to squeeze even more out. Everyone at home will probably be like, "What are you doing?" But hey, I like it. It works. Um, in terms of sp you know, I like the imager on, on Ozone. Um, I did not EQ this track, but what I normally do is, uh, is I add, take out some low end in the stereo and boost some, some, uh, some stereo, uh, like around 3K, or this area. But for the purpose of this video, that wasn't really necessary. And then last but not least, some Soothe. taking off this kind of stuff that's a really nice preset in there called ear friendly topple master which i really like and that's it that's all the highs if you have any questions you know drop a comment subscribe that's what they always say right comment like and subscribe i'm not really a youtuber so i don't really know how to do that but you know what to do if you like this video do everything that you have to do to support me. <laughs> um, like I said, if you have any questions, let me know. You can always tweet me, hit me up on Instagram, or leave a comment here. I, I check my socials frequently. So thank you for watching, and uh, stay vibrant. <laughs>